The final workout of the 2018 CrossFit Games Open has been released. Workout 18.5 is workout 11.6 is workout 12.5. Now I've been in the Open every single year since its inception, and I've done this workout four different times already. And I love it just as much today as I did in 2011. Here's the deal. If you've been doing CrossFit for any amount of time, we all know that the thruster and the pull-up are two of the staple movements that the program is founded around. If you can't do them well, it's probably because you just don't want to put in the time to work on two things that are really hard, that aren't super glamorous, but that make you really fit. So today, we'll talk a little bit about strategy and then a little bit about setup and how I think this workout can go the best for you. After this week, we're done. Let's have some fun with this. The workout is structured as a seven minute AMRAP. Three thrusters, three chest of our pull ups. Six, six, nine, nine, increasing by threes until you hit the seven minute cap. Now, the thruster, although it's one of the most challenging full body movements in CrossFit for most of us, it's also one of the ones where you can lose efficiency by being tense when you don't need to be. If you think of a thruster as a front squat into a push press, that flow of legs into arms then arms into legs becomes a lot more natural. My advice, don't do more work than you need to. That lockout overhead is just a press straight to the sky. You don't need to stick your butt out and stick your neck forward. So I'd recommend squat cleaning the first rep, finding your rhythm and controlling with just a split second pause overhead to get your breath and go into the next rep. I call this the froning to my athletes because when Rich does it, it doesn't look like he's trying that hard and the first rep always looks like his last rep, slow and steady. So from here, chest up nice and tall, squat clean, get down to the bottom, lock out, and find that rhythm where you can breathe, control, use your legs to your advantage, and minimize the travel of that barbell with your arms. For the chest to bar pull-up, one of the most efficient ways in CrossFit to get through high volumes of pull-ups is going to be the butterfly. Now, I'm not great at the butterfly pull-up, let me start by saying that. However, if you can get into a smooth rhythm, it is definitely going to be the fastest way to go. The challenge is if it's not a movement that you're very confident with, it can actually take a lot more time and energy that I think is worth. So, going to kipping pull-ups at that point might be the best way to go. Let's try this, get a smoother version, hop down, then see a more tense version, and hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference between which one takes a little bit more energy. So, hopefully, a smoother butterfly chest bar is where you find some sort of rhythm, keeping your legs fairly straight, arms as relaxed as you can. If you're more tense doing the reps, it's not gonna be worth your while. Watch a much more tense, controlled attempt at a butterfly. So from here, hop up. If you're controlling and being much jerkier, that is likely not gonna save energy, but rather cost a lot more. Kipping, if you can keep your body tight, can still be fairly relaxing to be able to stay engaged in that kip, but not use all of your grip strength and exhaust you. So, Kip, trying to stay as tight as you can. Just like with your standard kipping pull-ups with the chin over, making sure to press away at the top to give you momentum to come back down and through will make it a lot more of an efficient movement. Another aspect of pull-ups I don't think people talk about nearly enough as they should is the height of the bar. If I'm jumping up to the bar every single time I need to do a rep, if I'm exhausted and out of breath, jumping up can take a lot of energy. Also, if I jump up, my hands might fold over themselves, causing a greater likelihood of tears and rips. There's gonna be a lot of those this week, unfortunately. So, if you can jump up safely and get your momentum going, then yeah, you'll be fine and your feet won't scrape the ground. Set up and then go into your reps. But if that's not you or when you get tired, having a lower bar isn't a bad idea. Not only will it allow you to try and set your hands so they don't fold over and tear, but if and when you get to the point where you need to do quick singles, it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to do them on this than on a high bar. Watch, if I do two reps here as singles, this can take a lot more time than being on a lower bar, getting in a quick kip, 
dropping and still being right underneath the bar. Something to play around and think about. Let's talk physical setup for this workout. One thing people will want to do is set up their bar and the pull up in a station where they have to take negative steps to get from one movement to the other. That's important and I'll address that in a second, but what I want you to address first is how you move throughout the workout. If I do a single pull up or a single set, drop down, walk around, chalk up over there, come back over, look at the bar, that's gonna add a heck of a lot more time than having my barbell seven feet away and walking straight from there to here. Practice doing a rep, doing a set, staying where you are, taking a breath and going, instead of this, walking around, shaking it out, because it's also more energy to move front to back. People walk more often than they think. Same thing with the thrusters. I can finish a rep, but if after my last rep I bail the bar and run to the pull-up rig, odds are I'm going to have to take more time to adjust the bar again before I start my next set. So stay calm, stay focused, and stay deliberate with your movement, please. If you finish that last rep of thruster, you can follow the bar down so it will basically be in the same spot it was when you started. Now whether you turn and face this way and then go to the rig, have the bar here and step over it, or have your back to the pull-up bar and then turn around, I really don't think matters that much. As long as you're minimizing your rest and being efficient with your movement, I think you're gonna be fine. Now let's actually talk about pacing for this workout. For new athletes especially, or folks who get so fired up, you're gonna hear three, two, one, go and think to yourself, I can easily do six, nine, 12, maybe 15, thrusters in a row, and maybe pull-ups in a row, and you're gonna come out swinging. Unless you're a regional athlete, or unless these are your two favorite movements that you absolutely crush anytime you do them, please do not follow that strategy. Instead, keep your heart rate down and realize that a seven minute workout, although it seems fairly short, can be really, really long if you're blown up by three minutes in. My advice is to focus on heart rate and breathing and taking short sets, short rests, and continuing your pace throughout the entire workout. So, for most people, I'm gonna probably suggest not going past the round of six, maybe nine unbroken, and then intentionally break it up after that. Whether it's sets of three the whole way, six, three, three for the set of 12, or any smaller set breakdown than you might wanna do if you think you were fresh. Keeping your heart rate under control, controlling the bar, small, quick sets on the pull-ups and keeping your heart rate down is gonna be the way to go. So for the set of six, for example, let's say you do these unbroken. Chest up, full squat, if that's rep four, rep five, rep six, control. Keep the bar close, walk right to the bar. Maybe you're gonna do threes. One, two, three. Stay right here, hop right back up. You get the gist breaking more than you think to conserve your muscles and keep your heart rate down is definitely going to pay off. There will be folks who get through the set of 12 really fast, but their last 90 seconds, they're going to be standing around a lot, maybe missing reps or not having their chest touch the bar. Don't waste reps this week either. So it's the final week of the 2018 Open. You've got thrusters and chest to bar pull-ups, and the workout is only seven minutes long. I know you want to leave it all out there, but as I said before, seven minutes is a long time if you don't pace this thing right. My advice, go slower than you think you should right out of the gate. I don't care how fast you get through the round of nine. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you get into that 12, 15, 18, 21 round. Using a lower bar for pull-ups and going to quick sets of three, even quick singles when you get tired, is gonna be better off in the long run than doing large sets, fatiguing more, likely tearing your hands, but then standing around for longer in between sets. If you can keep yourself moving through a set of 10 fast butterfly pull-ups, see how that makes you feel. Then hop down, get to a lower bar, and do 10 quick singles. See how much slower that is and how much more refreshed you are. Most people are gonna to need to go to singles or they're gonna be sitting around. If you're really good at pull-ups and great at thrusters, as I've said, you don't need any of this advice. You're just gonna go but most people watching this video need to know how to reel it in. You can be excited, but if you pull a froning and control your heart rate, waste no reps, 
and think about efficient technique, you're gonna be a lot better off in the long run. Please pace yourself, have a great time, and remember, after this one, we're done for an entire year. Thanks for watching the open videos this year. Hope you enjoyed them. Good luck, have fun, I believe in you.